is that. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Off rip. My good friend needs no introduction, but I will introduce him. Yo, Roland. What's up? Listen, brother, I took the night off yesterday. And I got I got to watching this debate. Right? And yep. tonight, tonight's show. Welcome to the Fat Joe Show, Roland. You've been a good friend of mine for many years, man. It's good to see you on that treadmill. Good to see you looking brand new. I see everything you're doing. I'm watching you. And uh, Roland, uh, I'm watching this debate. I haven't had this much anxiety since like a Mike Tyson Holyfield fight. Like it felt like that, right? It, 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 it was. It meant it meant that much, right? Uh, what did you take from this debate, Roland? And it's an honor to talk to you on the show. What 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 is the highs of this debate? What did you see in this debate? What did you expect from this debate? Um, what you saw, what you saw was the sheer arrogance, stupidity, ignorance of Donald Trump on full display. Um, Sunday and Monday, I watched the Showtime series, The Comey Rule, and he talked about um, what what he dealt with in you know the whole deal with with the Hillary Clinton emails, and then when Donald Trump became president, and I I, I actually had posted on Instagram. I'm gonna pull it up. I posted on Instagram. Let me find it here. I posted on Instagram that after after watching that. I was even more committed to ensure that we not see this man elected um, because what I need people to understand uh, is that what well, folk don't realize, this is what I said, I'm watching part two of Showtime's Call Me Rule, and I am more steadfast in my belief that we have a thug in the old office. Any person who votes for Donald Trump is knowingly supporting a dishonest, lying, corrupt person Shame on them for doing so. So I use the hashtag fire Trump in November. Uh, I was one of the first media people to call Donald Trump a liar. You had media folks who did not want to use the word lie. They were like, well, you know, no, in order to use lie, you have to understand. Well, you know, Roland, everything changed. He changed. He threw the book out the window. Everybody oh, trying to be cordial, respectful. Nope, nope. Every he he turned this he turned America to what it is right now in twenty twenty. Right. And, like, and what people need to understand, this man has no morals, no values, no principles. And the prob and the problem here is what he's done is and see, because he means nothing, he knows and Donald Trump's not a Republican, he's not a conservative, he ain't a Democrat. Donald Trump cares about himself. But here's what he's done. For the Republicans, it's about power. I'm going to tell you right now, I'm in D.C. They don't like him. Privately, they trash him. Privately, they dog him. They don't care. It's about power. It's about control. It's about controlling the courts. And see, let me tell you something. I've been dealing with all these people who are black and Latino and who are Asian. I hear these people say, oh, uh, you know what? We can survive Trump. Let me tell you something. Donald Trump and Mitch McConnell have appointed 218 federal judges who are right wing, largely white men between the ages of 35 and 45. Eighty eight percent of the federal judges he has appointed are white men. Now, let me help you all out. There are nine Supreme Court justices. He has appointed two. Now he has a third one. But I'm going to do some math. Ruth Bader Ginsburg just died at the age of 87 years old. Um, Neil Gorsuch, who was his first appointee, is 53. Meaning, if Gorsuch serves as long as Ruth Bader Ginsburg, mm -hmm. Neil Gorsuch is going to serve for the next 34 years on the Supreme mm -hmm. Court. Brett Kavanaugh, second pick, 55. 
If you use 87, he will be there the next 32 years. The white woman he just named, Amy Coney of Barry, she's 48. If she served till she's 87, and remember, they can serve longer. It's a lifetime appointment. That means she's there for the next 39 years. So if you are 20 years old, that means that you will not get a chance to replace any one of these judges until you are 67. Mm. That's one third of the Supreme Court. The other two, the three other conservatives, Sam Alito is 70. Clarence Thomas is 72. Uh, and uh, um, uh, John Roberts is 65. That means, that means John Roberts, if he stays until he's 87, he's there 22 more years. Alito's there 17 more years. Clarence Thomas is there 15 more years. So every law, every voting rights law, every criminal justice law, every environmental law, every single law goes to the courts when somebody sues, and that's what Republicans understand. And so people are sitting their ass at home saying, it doesn't matter, you're wrong. That's you know, Roland, man, you know, you know, we from the hood, black, Latino, you hear all these conspiracies, yo, my vote don't count, the black man's being held back, the, the this, the this, yo, Roland, man, can you tell me why it's important to get out there and get out, because everybody talks stuff in their stoop, front of their building, the barbershop, but then when the day comes, they don't want to get out there and stand online and go vote. Can you please tell me the, so, the rawest truth to why we have to vote? It's real simple. There's not a damn thing in your life that government doesn't impact. First, the moment you born, your birth certificate is a government document. Mm. When your ass die, your death certificate is a government document. Mm. Driver's license, government document. Marriage license, government document. Divorce decree, government document. Child support payment, government document. I can go on and on. Now, you say, oh, I don't want government in my life. Okay, guess what? Government regulates water. Government regulates whether there's lead in the paint on the playground for your children. Government, for the people who are on the stoop, government regulates the damn air you are breathing because you have Environmental Protection Agency who are the ones determining uh, in terms of cutting back on carbon dioxide and chemicals. Government impacts the uh, exhaust coming out your car. Oh, you don't drive? The exhaust coming out that bus. Fuel, effic fuel efficiency standards for your car. We ain't even got to education. Impact that. Your health. When it comes to clinical trials, whether or not you have diabetes or whether you have a cancer or sickle cell, Government, National Institutes of Health, government. Uh, uh, CDC, government. And so what people understand is somebody's put in charge. And so you have people who are over those departments. And so for all the folks who are sitting here saying, yeah, they ain't got, I, 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 ain't real, I, I have it. people say, well, I ain't seen nothing change in the black community. Let me tell you how dumb that is. The Affordable Care Act provide greatly decrease the number of black people who had health care for the first time. If you are, uh, if you are not 25 years old, the Affordable Care Act allows for your parents to keep your lazy ass on their health insurance plan until you are 25. Not only that, let me, let me, let me, let me explain something to the people who just don't, don't, don't understand. The, uh, the Obamacare, right? Because to me, that's the greatest thing Obama did with his presidency. Because so many people had tried to get this passed but couldn't, right? Like Senator Ted Kennedy. For years, they've been trying because 150 years. 150 years. 150 years. 
So now the insurance companies make money off of everything. Right? Yep. I, I can tell you, I pay jury insurance, car insurance, house insurance, life insurance. Yo, I pay so much insurance. But the point is, the Affordable Care Act allow people that had preconditions. Yep. Really diabetes, sickle cell, asthma, stuff like that. Little kids that had problems with them before insurance companies would not give these guys no insurance. Cut you off. And you were scared. And so, was scared and so if I believe, down. Yep. Roland, if I believe Joe Biden, right, and I look at Donald Trump and I say, I say to myself, what type of man wants to strip these people right. from health care knowing that they have pre-existing conditions and most likely they're not going to be able to be able to pay these doctor bills? So when I'm sitting there, I'm like, this is pretty crazy that, you know, we're going to strip 20 million people. They said it was 20 million people with pre-existing conditions. No, 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 no. There are 100 million. Yeah, but there's 20 on this uh, Affordable Care Act. Yeah. Uh, you know, like, you know, customers, right? Yeah. But my thing is, uh, why in the greatest country on earth, or the so-called greatest country on earth, we want to strip the vulnerable people from their health care? Because that's America. Because what you have is, it's all about the haves and the have-nots. And that's who Donald Trump represents. He represents the haves. He represents uh, the folk. That's why he won't pay his taxes. Uh, that's why all the nonsense that he does, that's what you're dealing with. And what people have to understand is that I, I get the folks who say, well, I ain't seen this and I ain't seen that. You lying. You lying. Because here's the piece. There's been something that has changed, good or bad, in your life or your community. See, so, and the deal is here. I don't believe there's any politician that's a savior. But what I do believe there's a difference between somebody who wants to fuck it up and mm -hmm. wreck everything versus somebody who says, how can we try to fix this and make this thing better? And that is the issue that too many people, man, Roland, don't care about. Roland, Donald Trump said the insulin's like water now. And he lied. It's a lie. The insulin, the prices for insulin has not dropped at all. It has not. It's a lie. First of all, you cannot change the cost of prescription drugs with a damn executive order. That's a lie. So he just lied. Oh, he lied. Shit, he lied about all kind of stuff. But Man. let me ask you something. It's more your life. It's me. I cover hip hop. I cover sports. We got uh, game one of the... Uh, Finals, we got, we got, I, I talk about everything. Right. Just now, because it's the post debate, we talk about politics. But you, your life has been based on politics. Uh, what it's like for you to watch a debate and just watching a president of the United States blatantly lie? When you know, when you're the fact checker and you're like, yo, he's lying. He lied again. He lied again. Well, and he that, lied again. And that's the problem I had. Like when I, I, when I do my show, I get these Republicans who get mad saying oh um oh oh, oh oh why you want to be finished and this is what i tell people because your ass lying see this is real simple for me i don't allow you to lie i'm gonna let you finish but your ass ain't gonna lie like for mm -hmm. instance or if i hear something i'm gonna sit and correct him on the spot so i'm sitting there chris wallace pissed me off before the debate because he said, I sort of see my role as the moderator to be invisible. I'm not going to be doing any fact checking. I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? If you the goddamn moderator, and if Joe Biden lies, or Trump lies, and your ass know the facts, you are doing a disservice to the American people allowing a lie to stand. And Roland, let me, tell you, let me tell you something, Roland. Uh... The president violated Chris Wallace too, bro. Oh, he did. And, and Chris, Chris Wallace really surprised all... me. He was asking some good questions, and and that's just supposed to be his guy. And he was violating them too. Right. And uh, he got punked. He got punked. 
See, this and is let me, so what, what, what is Biden supposed to do and, when Trump is screaming and interrupting him every two seconds? What is Biden supposed to do? What would Obama do at that point? Here's the deal. You can never match stupid. You can never match crazy. This is a debate technique I've always understood. When you're in a debate and you see somebody who's just out of control, when they go here, you can match that, but it's a waste of time. You go here. So what Biden did was, Biden was like, I'm going to show you the contrast. So when stupid is stupid, I'm going to stay calm. Mm. My voice is going to be here. That's why Biden was trying to talk to Chris Wallace. He would look at Trump. And that's when he finally was like, you know what? The hell with y'all. I'm going to talk to the camera. And see, when you, when you lean talk to the camera, what you've now done is you've now said, you mean nothing. You mean nothing. I'm talking to the American people. This is what I would do with Joe Biden in the next debate. I would not even, because, and I've, I've been there. There are people, Joe, who I don't like. You don't exist to me. Yeah. And yeah. I, I know, I know that well. No, when I say. No, 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 no. I know I say, that. It's to me. No, no, no. I know that. I mean, you could be right here. You could be in the four other people. Yeah, you could be doing jumping jacks, and I'm like, you don't exist. Don't exist. Joe Biden, the next debate, that fool's over there. This is Joe Biden looking dead at the camera. Not even looking at the debater. And then you say, let me know when you want to stop being rude. Let me know when you want to stop being arrogant. Folks, this is a child we're looking at. This is a narcissist we're looking at. This is a petty man we're looking at. This is a broke man we're looking at. I am here to talk to you about the future of America and this child wants to throw a temper tantrum. You know, Roland, I, I, uh, You show the contrast, and people yeah. at home are going, that other one look like a damn fool. Roland, See? Roland, you know me. Uh, yo, Ari, hold on, I'm coming to you next. Ari Melba, my guy, Ari Melba for MSA. You know, I got a gumbo going on here. I got listen, you. Roland. All right, when uh, you gonna have me back on your show, Ari? It's no, been we, I can make that happen, Roland. I can make that happen. Chill, bro. Chill. I got you. Uh, no, Ari's mama loved me. My my thing is, Roland, um, I don't know if I'm naive. I don't know if, 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 I could not believe the man would not denounce the white supremacy. I I could no. I, I don't care. I'm talking about in the presidential debate. Yeah. He, I, it blew my mind. And 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 I'm not me. Rick Santorum was correct about this on CNN. Donald Trump won't condemn those who follow him even white supremacist crazy he won't dude that's why do you think he said there are good people on both sides after charlottesville yeah. he knows there are racists voting for him i he know that i know that rolling today that, that, today that, that, i've never heard of the proud boys you lying that was, ugly, that was an ugly moment in american history bro to, no, no, just to see it. no it wasn't no it wasn't it was the realest moment in American history because America was built on white supremacy. America America exists because of white supremacy. Donald Trump is no different than Herbert Hoover, who supported the Lily White faction of the Republican Party. That's no different than when and Herbert Hoover was a Republican. It's no different than Woodrow Wilson, a Democrat, uh, actually condemned. Uh, he allowed, he, first of all, he, he allowed the birth of a nation to be aired, the film shown in the White House. Woodrow Wilson was one of the greatest white supremacists in the history of America. He was president. Andrew, yes, the, look, we had a history of white supremacy. Donald Trump 
is pushing the buttons of white supremacy. When he came down that elevator in 2015, that, that's it. And rapists, he yeah. launched his campaign because he was pushing the buttons of white supremacy. When he talked about oh, keeping a suburban, uh, suburban women safe. Ah, what he's saying is keeping white suburban women safe. Yeah, 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 yeah. See, I that's all that. that was. Roland, let me tell you something. Thank you for coming on the show because I got a couple of other guests coming through. I need to have you back on for a longer period. Hit so me we up. can spend more time. Today we got a gumbo, but I super appreciate you coming on the show. Thank you so much, I appreciate Roland. You, we'll do it soon, baby. God bless my brother. Peace. One love. Roland Smith. Oh my God. Living legend. This is getting out of control right now. Ari, next up, just the big, big show. You got Roland Smith on here? Yo, Ari. What's up? I, I see you talking about me. Yo, Ari. Yo, Roland Smith, when you going to bring him back on the show? Yo, we love Roland, but you know what? It ain't about Roland. It ain't ah! about guests. It ain't about TV. We're talking about what's hey, going to happen in these 30-plus days, man. But I love Roland. But it ain't about TV guests, man. Thanks for having me, man. What a debate. Yo, what a debate. Let me ask you a question, Ari. What was the lowest moment at this debate? So I agree with many that the direct invocation of, of violence, white supremacy, and racism was the lowest substantive moment. And sometimes we get it tripped up about what was surprising. I already knew this. Yeah, this ain't this ain't like oh you discovered, you know, Fat Joe or Billie Eilish before someone else. This ain't about who knew it first. We we just need and my my job is the facts. We need everyone to know those facts, even if you weren't surprised that he did it. But you know, you know, Ari, know America Go ahead. has had, of course, four hundred years of slavery. Which could you yep. could you imagine? Right, you get taken from your land, you're a slave. They're doing all type of things to you. You praying for a hundred years. Say you live a hundred years. You praying for freedom and never comes. The next generation, another hundred years and never comes. The next generation, another hundred years and never comes. The next generation, another hundred years and never comes. And then finally, freedom. Right? And and so four hundred years of slavery. And then you fast work forward to eight years ago, and Barack Obama. 12 years ago, becomes president. And so the first black president, and so we're thinking this country has changed, right? And so last night you look at a debate and you see the president of the United States would not denounce white supremacy, Ari. Like, and, and so is this illusion? Is racism and is, is it so real that it's an, like I, I, I was shocked and, and I've been mm. into rap battles with 50 Cent like I was shocked when I seen this with my own eyes uh, I thought we were past this Ari we're not past this huh no we're not past it and the fact that someone gets away with doing the worst thing doesn't mean everybody wants him to do the worst thing or get away with it. So people have been getting a crash course in what's wrong with the system. Just like other countries, Joe, look at us and they're like, what do you mean more people voted for Clinton, but Trump is the president? So every time you talk about what people put up with, on the one hand, there's a lot of support for bad things and that has to be confronted. On the other hand, they want you to be discouraged. They want you to give up. They want you to say, well, yeah, but Ari, let mess. me tell you something. You're the hip this was you're, a mess. You're, 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 you're a hip hop journalist in MSNBC. In the hood, let me give you one for Friday. In the hood, if I say, Terror Squad boys, stand down, but be ready. Stand by, yeah. No. If I tell the Terror Squad boys, Stand down, good old boys. But hey, be ready. What does what what do you think that meant? I think it was a direct appeal 
to the most provably lawless and violent elements of his support, including racist supporters, to be ready to resort to violence if he does not get what he wants in the election. Facts. That's the sad fact. That's a sad fact, right? So, so that means if he loses, if he loses the election, and the white supremacists or the malicious take it to the streets and start, that will give him glory. He will be happy on the way out seeing this done. All I can say is this is not a drill, and this is not a time to get caught up in little differences or what's not perfect. You know, in my job, I don't tell people how to vote, but I do tell them the facts. So when you see the white supremacy and you see the calls to violence, you see the president openly defending an indicted murderer in Wisconsin, this is not a drill. So yes, and he said, stand by to these people who are out there talking about armed revolution, just like in Wisconsin, the shooter, and again, my job is to say the alleged murderer, because it's not been proven mm -hmm. yet, but the alleged shooter and murderer- I would say alleged too. Right, is out there allegedly trying to kill people who were simply exercising their First Amendment rights. So this is not a drill. And I will just say, we've been through, as you mentioned, history. People have been through worse. Our, some of our parents' generation has been through a lot. So it's not a time to say, oh, the hell with it. Uh, but it is a time for everyone to know their rights and stay involved. And I do think there's evidence that the system can also withstand even, God forbid, if it goes there, even the attempt to have violence of course. override the vote. The violence will is not allowed legally to override the vote. And I believe there's a lot of people who will stand up against that if it comes to that. I believe that as well, but it's an ugly fact that we're even discussing this, you know, in America, uh, land of the free, home of the brave. Uh, another moment where Trump lost his cool. And I think this was, this, this was the worst moment for him, believe it or not, not, not the white supremacy, because the white supremacy affects black and brown, Asian Jews, right? Sure. But that's just part of America. We all have family members that have drug, that have, that have addictions to drugs. Sure. And that's a real thing. Drug addiction is a real thing. It's hard to get it off. Like they say, get the monkey off your back, get off this, these drugs. And a lot of parents are, home and praying for their kids to get home. He attacked Joe Biden's son for having a drug addiction. I think, I think he lost points. That was the biggest loss. That was his biggest mistake of the debate. What you think? Well, you said it was the biggest loss. You know, Drake said, other than Rick Ross, Aubrey's the biggest boss. <laughs> and I, I agree with you if I could rhyme that. This was one of the biggest losses of the night. Look, you could go any direction with it. It's hypocritical. It's wrong. Donald Trump's own brother struggled with and ultimately succumbed to alcoholism. If you want to get into what demons are inside his family as he looks at this, it was out of bounds. There are so many different things that have been violated that that alone would have been the biggest thing, if not for the five other big things. Um, and so, yeah, it, it shows people Donald Trump is a jerk. The debate obviously was also revealed to be relying on customs that he's intent on breaking. So you need a moderator and a set of rules and sanctions to deal with that. You need a mute button. You might need to take him. I mean, I, I work in TV. You might need new rules that say when it's not your turn, like a kindergartner, your mic is off and you're not on camera. So he can't. Uh, yeah, because cause, cause what I'm saying that. to you, Ari, um, what could Joe Biden have done? This guy kept interrupting everything. What could he, what could he have done? Like other than what he did? Like to me, I don't know what move he could have made uh, any different. Like, I it, like what could you do? Yeah. Well, look. I don't think it was a perfect performance by either of them. I think there's a lot of obvious ways that, that, uh, that Trump was worse, both delivery, that's like what we call in politics performance, and then in substance. But I think Biden, Biden's best moments 
I moved inside because my phone was getting hot. Joe, you're too hot out here. <laughs> my phone hot. Uh, <laughs> the block is hot. I, I thought Biden's best moments were when he really spoke straight to the American people and said, it's not about his family or mine, it's about you. And he got right in there. And, he, and at that rare times, Trump became a little bit of background noise. You knew he was talking, but you were able to follow the thread. I think Joe Biden did struggle with that. And if you're asking me, like, look, I'm just watching this like everyone else. But my view, I think anyone debating Trump has to do more of that. You have to be able to go and pl if they give you two minutes, you have to count on Trump trying to talk over you for those full two minutes and you keep going. Mm. Um, my brother Ari, man, uh, you've always been a friend of mine. You always show up. Uh, thank you for checking in with me, man, with this post debate on the big, 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 big show. I'll the continue to show. support you. I thank now, you for everything. Now, I got one question for you on the uh -huh. line. We deal with so much serious stuff. Mm -hmm. What is the more favored Fat Joe nickname now that you've, you've gone in, you've advanced? Is it Joey Crack, which a lot of us still love in the old school? Or is it Jopra? At this point, it's Jopra because my life, is dedicated to journalism now. And I love doing what I'm doing. Uh, I, I can't wait. I prepare my notes all day uh, for the show. I'm chasing down talent. I have nobody who books talent. So I book talent just like I hit you up, like, yo, Ari, I need you. Uh, but it's been fun. This is a mom and pop show. You know, my wife is on Drinks and Lights. My daughter, executive producer of the show, she's it. on the music. You know, I'm having a great time. You I know, love it. we're you trying know to stay safe. I'll jump so you can keep doing your thing, but I'll tell you in closing, because you and I have talked about this before. There is a reason that hip hop and journalism have so much in common when they're done right, because they're both about reality and storytelling. And if you're not living your reality and sharing it honestly, you're not going to last in either field, even though they're very different. And boy, if you don't know how to tell a story, I mean, you have been telling stories in various ways and mediums. People come to you. You were big before Instagram. These, these young people, they, they look, oh, Fat Joe's got a lot of followers. Man, Fat Joe had followers back when it was even harder to get Before there was Instagram. <laughs> because you tell stories, man. So I love that. I love you having me on. I love you having all these different people. We need more people in the convo. So thank That's you, man. That's right. Thank you so much, Ari. We'll be sure to check you out on MSNBC, baby. Respect, baby. Peace, baby. Joe. Man, you don't know who I know. Wow. That's Ari. This thing, this thing is unreal. This thing is unreal. Tonight on the Big Big Show, we are discussing the post debate. It's also the first day of the finals. My prediction is there's no way in the world LeBron James is going to let somebody take this title from them. Miami Heat, great franchise, one of the greatest. Pat Riley, one of the greatest. But that Lakers, it's a serious thing going on. And Fleazy, don't pop out while I'm talking about the Heat and the Lakers, because you're a Celtics fan. You and Percy, <laughs> you and Percy, <laughs> y'all took that out. Ladies and gentlemen, the most electrifying politicians right from ground zero New York City, the one and only Jumani Williams. It's about to get real. It's the realest one on the streets. Shout out to the Bronx Barrel President, Ruben Diaz Jr. Jumani, I'm sending out that request to you. Sheesh.
Big, big show don't stop. It's the biggest. It's the biggest in music, in sports, in politics, in health. He said, and you don't know who I know. This man coming up is the most electrifying. Out of New York City, Brooklyn, New York, the most electrifying. Jumani Williams. Oh, here we go. Yo! Uh -huh. Can you see me? No, I can't see you. I can't see you. I can see the window. There you go. You can see me now? Yo, Jumani, you growing the braids and all that. Huh? I'm trying, man. Peace and blessings. I'm trying. I'm trying. Jumani, Hold on. Well, real I quick. I want to the here. Of the fans. She just want to say hello real quick. Hey, what's up? Hi. How you doing? I'm doing good. How are you? I'm good. How old are you? I'm 12. My daughter's 14. She's Ooh. the executive producer of the show. Woman Empowerment. Thank Women empowerment. Thank you, man. Thank you. <laughs> Jumani. Yeah, yeah. You watched the debate last night. If you call it a debate, I watched whatever was on the TV at that time. That's a fact. Um, <laughs> were, you, were you anxious before it started? And when it started, were you anxious? Shout out to Erica Ford. My voice on the streets. Erica yeah. Ford. What up, Erica? On the streets. Jumani, so you are, uh, so was you anxious before this debate started? Yeah, absolutely. I think everybody's anxious before. This is the anxious time in the country. I am, just to be clear, I want to be 100%. I'm not the biggest fan of the Biden-Harris package right here. So I was nervous from the beginning. I think the Democratic Party uh, put up the second worst person they could have put up to battle this president, and that's Joe Biden. The first words was Bloomberg. Um, but we're here now, so this is what we got to deal with. I want to you know all the people who talking that craziness, their party, you know, we're not doing let's do either. They're talking madness. You have Donald Trump, this is existential, and then you, we just got to get rid of him, and then we deal with the rest of it after. So I was very nervous and been nervous uh, about Joe Biden. I mean, you may feel that he's not particularly electrifying uh, to folks, there's a bunch of issues that we have, uh, but I need to hold him accountable starting on January 20th. <clears throat> I need to get rid of Donald Trump starting November 3rd, and that just simply means voting Biden-Harris. There's just nothing else to it, you know. I think I saw my brother, my son, post something. <laughs> yeah, we mad because Biden voted for the crime bill 25 years ago, but Trump just shouted out the Proud Boys yesterday. Like, that's, that's a fact. That's I real. also believe, I also believe that a person could change. I also believe that the way Fat Joe thought 25 years ago is not the way Joe thinks now. Shout out to DJ Clark Kent. You are royalty, my brother. He's calling Jumani Brooklyn royalty. You know, when you, got, when you got Clark Kent saying that, Jumani, Yo, Jumani that's let cool. me tell you, I don't want to shoot down anybody else. Shout out our brother, Ruben Diaz. Bronx Bell president. I don't want to shoot down anybody else, but to me, you're the most electrifying politician in New York City. Yo. Um, I kind of wish you had went for mayor. <laughs> no. No. I, you know, I want, I want our brothers and sisters, whoever to win, but um, the reason why I fell in love with Ruben Diaz is because I almost ran him over in the South Bronx in the projects at 10 o'clock at night. <laughs> and then when he said, yo, you almost killed me, he said, oh, Fat Joe. So I said, wow, Ruben Diaz. And he was like, I was just giving a speech to these old, old folks here. It's like 10 o'clock at night in the projects. <laughs> I said, you know what? This is a real one, right? And the same with you. There's no way to fake it the authenticity when it comes to you. That's why I called on you. Um, Jumani, man, uh, last night, uh, they got to come up with some, I, I know they talking about, 
I know they're talking about coming up with some new rules for the next debate. Um, what, you said Joe Biden and Harris. What do you don't like about Harris? Look, uh, we got to lift up and shout out our, our black women and our, and our sisters. So I definitely want to do that. And so I want to make sure I put that out first. We had a time, just have my stepdaughter, shout out. I know my fiance, India, was on here. Shout out to her. Uh, particularly this time, what, what black women are facing, we got to lift that up. So I'm going to do that. Uh, but we had concerns about her track record in the criminal system going way back. And that still stands. Those, that stuff just doesn't, doesn't go away. And so uh, those issues, you know, I'm a, I'm a lefty crazy dude. I'm a Bernie. I was Bernie, Bernie Sanders. In 2016, I'm Bernie Sanders now. So that's my headspace. And so uh, it's just difficult, you know, when I see Democrats who I believe have helped us get into this position. Like, it's about incumbency protection for so many of them. So they do what they need to do to get to the next level. And it's kept a system that crushes the rest of us. And that's just a problem. It's not just a Republican problem. And I'm just always going to be honest about that. We are, we look at cities like New York across this nation, and it is correct to point out that the problems we have are many times Democratic mayors, Democratic governors, where we have these problems. So I have to be real about that. So, you know, I want to hold them accountable on January 20th, but there's no way. And some of the people who are talking about third party, they have privilege that they may make it through the next four years. But that young man who is sitting in a cage right now, who was purposely orphaned by this president or that woman who's being forced to have a hysterectomy or that trans black woman who's being killed and is afraid, they don't have the same privilege. So we have to start, start thinking about the people who are, uh, you know, the least among us in terms of privilege before we start talking about, I'm not- Jumani, Jumani, you know the man, the man, I can't lie. I'm not a Trump fan. Since he came down that escalator, I was at first for as a regular civilian. We came down that escalator and called all Mexicans rapists and drug dealers. I was shocked. He lost me there. Right? Um, but the man did pass the law for black and brown people to come home from jail. So he's not lying. He passed the law that not even o Biden, uh, uh, Obama or Biden passed, and he had the people come home. What, what, what's the name of that, 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 is it the Fresh Start? Yeah, I know, I know, I don't remember the title of the law. I know the, the law that you're speaking about. Mm -hmm. I, I will say this, um, nobody is gonna do 100% of nothing. Trump is pretty damn close. And even with that law that was passed, you have to look at it in the context of stuff. And so what, what people do, and I want to talk about this in, even in terms of elected officials, they will sometimes say, look what I did for this community. Look at this one community center I got. Look at this one law I passed. And then they tell you, don't look by, behind the curtains. Don't look the man behind the yeah. curtains. Look what I'm telling you. So this one little thing that may have freed some people, and God bless them, man, nobody needs to be behind those cages, particularly for those things they were talking about. But in context of what he's doing to the rest of the population, even the rest of the population who are still behind those uh, cell walls, it's not worth it. And so very often we'll look at this small piece at the expense of all the rest of everybody's lives. So it's really just a, 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 it's a smoke and mirrors. You know, tonight, more uh, this election, more than ever, I've been hearing folks like Ice Cube, Diddy, everybody talking about we need Biden to make a promise. We need to know our vote. We're not just going to vote for somebody. We need to know, they, they got to address what they're going to do for the black and brown community. Um, And well, the election's coming closer. What do you say to those people that are holding out? Do you say go and vote for Biden and Harris rather than seeing Trump another four years? Yeah, I, I hope those people continue to push because they are correct. We got to continue to push. We got to make sure we, they put something on the table knowing they could just go back on their word, right? But these folks have to stop taking our vote for granted. That's a fact. They've taken our folks for granted for many, many years. Um, black, brown, black women or who get the least uh, oftentimes are the ones that are holding up 
uh, the Democratic Party, and very often pushing this nation where it needs to go. I want them to stop holding, uh, pretending like our vote can't go anywhere else. I will say this, on November 3rd, there is nothing else that we can do to stop Trump besides vote for Biden and Harris. I am sorry that that is the way it is. I am angry that that is the way it is. I want nothing else but to have another option. But staying home or voting a third party, like I voted for Jill Stein instead of Hillary Clinton, we lived in New York, I thought we were safe. Turns out other blue states were not safe. So those options lead to one thing. No matter what you try to put out there, no matter what you try to say, on November 3rd, the only thing we can do to get rid of this existential threat is vote against Donald Trump, which means the Biden Harris. I don't want it to be that way. Here in New York City, New York, uh, New York City, I'm asking everybody to vote Working Families Party, top to bottom. Uh, that is a party that I think people can get behind, and you can you can make your message uh, across the uh, by voting the Working Families Party and not Democrat, and still uh, be voting uh, Biden Harris and, 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 and against Trump. But that's the existential threat right now. That's all we need to focus on. And then after that, by the way, Obama is the one that put the Demo the the deportation machine together. Like, we have to be honest about that. Before Trump, he deported more people than the Bushes combined. And no, mm -hmm. nobody can talk about that. And I have to respect the first black president. I, like, the Obama is that man. But we have to be honest about the shortcomings, what that means, and how it paved the way for what we have today. No one would have expected a straight just white supremacist to be in the White House. You know, I, I, I want to go back to the regular racism not the one not the one that we have right now let's deal with the regular racism. you know my guys in the hood shout out my brother percy he says he likes trump because at least trump tells you he's racist he <laughs> said, you know he don't like these other guys that lie like they're not but they racist so percy's like yo i'd rather him just say he's racist and we good that's there's there's facts to that except this man is fundamentally dangerous like I, I'm with him on that because there's a lot of people who try to act like they're, they're not and racism is always you know bubbling in this country anyway but what he's doing and it's no longer dog whistle like he just got a megaphone attached to loudspeakers screaming this stuff out is fundamentally dangerous to this country and to the entire world so that's, that's the, 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 the way we have to look at it it's not just a simple lesser to evil and this and that this man is fundamentally dangerous. He'll do anything just to win an election. We're going to have a problem win or lose, by the way. I'm not I'm nervous about winning or losing. But at least let's get to the losing part so we can see past that on January 20th and start holding Biden and Harris account. Jumani, thank you so much for coming on the show. So, so short notice. I appreciate you, friend, to the big, 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 big show. And let me tell you something. When, it don't have to be now. But when you do go for mayor, Fat Joe's <laughs> going to be out there with you every day, making sure it goes down. Yeah, I appreciate you very much, man, for everything you bring to the table, man. This is the show to be on anyway. No one else to be. I got to go to you. I was listening to you, the NBA joints. I got to say, I think LeBron probably going to take it, but that roster on the Heat is not a joke. No, the Heat is real, and I can get beat up out here because I live in Miami, so I can get beat yeah. up any given night. But... LeBron James, he knows the importance of legacy. Yeah. He knows how hard it is to win a chip. He's four wins away. Yeah. He's not giving that up. For I'm, a, I'm a reformed LeBron hater because I'm a Knicks fan. So my hat my hat is all cool. And uh, you know, but we gotta go check you know this me, out. I'm a Knicks fan. We never win. As soon as we don't make the playoffs, I go with LeBron every time. I hear that. Peace I'm a brother. God bless you, man. Like you too. Peace, man. You don't know who I know. I'm ready right now. I'm ready right now. We got to guess. He's the biggest. We got to guess. We've been flowing, baby. It's been real. I don't see my brother on here, Jay Smooth. I seen him earlier. Tell him to text a comment. And we can talk about this. There you go. Yeah, they ain't letting me pick them. No, man. I need a request. 
You got to send a request. Yo, Victor, send a request. fast now she didn't she was acting like it wasn't fast i was running circles around her coming back for her and all that yo vic send a request oh here we go ladies and gentlemen from the indiana Pacers, hopefully the new york Knicks soon the one and all yo 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 what's <laughs> Yo, man, what's up, baby? What up, Joe? What's happening? Welcome what's to happening? the big, big, big show. We've been talking for big, months big. <laughs> about you coming on here. Shout out to Tamika Mallory. Uh -huh, this is true. My sister out there on the front lines doing her thing. Tamika, if you stick around after him, I'll get you on, too. Hey, yo, listen. Yeah. <laughs> Victor, who you got in this series? The Lakers... Or the Miami Heat? Uh, that's a great question. I mean, it's hard to say because, I mean, I was watching I was watching live earlier when you was on, and you said, you know, it's all about legacy for LeBron. He's four wins away. You know, there's no there's no Steph, there's no Clay. You know what I'm saying? So he's locked in right now. But, I mean, I played against Miami in the first round. Um, and everything's clicking for them. You know how one team just everything's going yeah, right. It feels yeah. like Rocky. It feels like Cinderella. It exactly. Feels like, exactly. Yeah, it feels like Cinderella. It feels like Rocky. Exactly. Exactly. I don't know though. We'll see though. This game one going going to help me uh, figure out who's going to win the rest rest of the series though. Listen, I'm gonna learn a lot from this game one. You know me. I live in Miami 15 years. I love the whole organization. I love the fact that they in the finals, but I know when you got a killer and you got a guy who knows the importance of a win, not only for Kobe Bryant, rest in peace, mm -hmm. right? So yep. not only for Mamba, but when you got a guy who knows to close it out in four games, four wins, he'll have that other. You seen Shaq today have four trophies, four tips in front of Everybody wants to do that. Everybody. And, and when you see, when you look at Tia T, you see how they clown uh, Charles Barkley every night because he ain't got no hardware. But Charles right. Barkley, one of the greatest players ever played. Hello? Can't hear you. All right, I hear you now, bit. Yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah, Charles Barkley, one of the greatest ever for sure. That, and uh, if, when and it he comes don't have to a you, ring, though. He don't have a ring. He don't have that ring. So when Something it comes to that. you, would you make a choice to stay or go to a team where you're just a star, or do you want that hardware, Victor? Uh, uh I don't know, man. That's that's where it gets tough, you know. Uh, it's like picking your poison. You know what I'm saying? It's, sometimes you can have the best of both worlds, but sometimes you can't. Uh, man, anybody who know me, man, I'm all about winning. Um, and I feel like that's what you're, that's what you're defined as in this game. You know, I don't, I don't, a lot of people say they don't play for the money, but that's what I live and breathe by. Like I just want to be the greatest. I want people to, to, to talk, to have my name amongst the greats. And in order to do that, you gotta get rings. You gotta have trophies. You know what I'm saying? Um, not saying like Charles Barkley ain't a great player, but you know, at the end of the day, I, I want to be able to show my kids when I have them how great of a player I was. And in order to do that, you got to show them some hardware. So that's what I'm locked in on doing, man. I want I want some hardware, and I want a lot of hardware. You feel me? So smart, smart choice, and you deserve it because you 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 are beyond a superstar. You're an exceptional player, bro. Thank and, you. And uh, it was it. hard watching you hurt. You're watching your team, and your team is tough. Those Thank guys you. are tough. Thank you. You know what I'm saying? Your whole team is tough. You yes, know, sir. Indiana got a tough team. And uh, but just the fact that you you already see it though. This is different back in the day. You see Charles getting clowned every day on TV. <laughs> You're like, nah, I don't want to be that guy. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. I don't want to be that guy. 
Uh, and so, um, so you haven't made up your mind if you coming to New York City, huh? I knew that question was coming. Ah! I don't know what you're talking about, man. I don't know what you're talking about. I'm a pacer, man. I'm a pacer, dog. I'm a pacer. So I don't know. all these other rumors, I can't control the rumors, man. I'm just focused on my knee. Do you hear rumors sometimes to say to yourself, like, where the hell they heard that at? Man, all of the ones on the internet, I don't even know where where they come from. I'm just, you know, in the background working out, working on my knee, trying to get right for next year. You understand? So. Yeah, uh, and how do you do that? So when you see – uh. You know, I, I was really, really sad for uh, talking football, Saquon Barkley. He's from the Bronx. Yeah. On the Giants, he hurt his knee again. Like, and, mm -hmm. and you know what's so crazy about athletes is that you can get hurt and really, really just, you know, you could be incredibly talented and get hurt and it's not the same. Uh, what are you doing to come back even better than ever? Um. I personally think that, you know, coming back from injury is, is more so mental than physical. Um, I believe you have to to catch your body up to your mind. So your mind wants to do it, but sometimes your body withholds it, right? So in order to do that, I feel like you have to, to, to have a, an inner peace, um, be able to understand your body better than your mind does, right? So you can help yourself push through a little bit of pain in order for you to overcome some uncertainty. You know what I'm saying? So for me, I'm just trying to stay fresh, both internally and physically, to where I can perform at the highest level every day. If I give everything I have to this rehab, right, everything I have in this off season, and then I come out and I can't be effective, well, at least I know I gave everything I have. But knowing who I am as a person, um, if I give everything I have, I'm going to improve. That's just how I am. You understand? So for me, it's, it's a different type of mindset. I've been fighting my whole life, Joe. You know how, I mean, you from, I'm from D.C., you from New York. We've been fighting our whole life, man. No, nah, I know you. Know you I know you since you was a rookie, I think. I mean, <laughs> you've you been putting in work. You, you, yeah. they, everybody know you cold as ice. <laughs> uh, we just want to know when it's that defining moment where everything clicks team-wise, you – and then you could get on that, that stage, so you could get that stage. You know, Jamal Murray, somebody who, who was hurt and, and got picked late in the draft and came in this bubble and, and started and he popped, killing. He popped, he popped the bubble. <laughs> he popped the bubble. <laughs> like, yo, that boy was going crazy. Yes, he was. Um, yes, he was. And so uh, – Stay focused, my brother. What are you doing in the studio? The other day I called you and you was in a studio. <laughs> what are you doing in a music recording studio? Man, Joe, you know I sing from time to time, man. You know I can hold a tune, man. You know I was behind that Alan Iverson album back in oh, the yeah? days. Well, you yeah, know I we got to – you know what is what time it is. We got to do something for the people. For the people, my why brother, not? man, God bless you. Stay safe. Thank you for checking up on the big show. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. And I look forward to next season seeing you on that court killing them. Thank you, my brother. I appreciate it. All right, Vic. Number love, love, man. Love. You already know. Peace. All right. Damn, man. It's the biggest show in the game, boy. You don't know who I know. You don't know who I know. And you say to yourself, Damn, when is he going to stop? We took yesterday off for the debate. I'm not even sure we were supposed to do that. I gave whoever some time to marinate. But when you talk about the real, this is the realest. We not the ones. And I see my sister Tamika Mallory on here. I wish she'd come back. Because I'll let her close the show talking that shit. Because when Tamika get going, legendary shit. Legendary. Out there in the streets. And we got to support our brothers and sisters who are peacefully protesting for the voiceless. We have to protect them. We have to support them. Trade the Truth and my son and all of them. We have to support them.
You don't know who I know. And let me tell you something, bro. I am a journalist. I let people come on here and tell their stories. And the reason I got into this is because people were lying a lot in documentaries and twisting hip hop and changing the narrative towards to work towards them. I interview the people personally and ask them the questions because 20 years from now, when somebody gets into hip hop and they want to know the truth, they be like, hey, that's not what Snoop Doggy Dog said on the Fat Joe show. And so that's why I got involved with what I got involved with. Also, didn't like the way our so-called hip hop journalists was treating the icons and legends. And that's with an exception of EFN and Nori. They've been doing a great job doing their thing. And everybody, I'm happy for everybody, even the scumbags. I'm happy for them. But my thing gonna be different. And you know, if you tune in, if you tuned in today, you know we bought that life. We in them streets heavy. We don't play that. I'm gonna let you guys go. Put God first. Always believe in God no matter what. I seen uh, my brother Pistol Pete has this uh, jail reform show. It's called Dog in the Yard. It's amazing. Whenever I have time down, I, I, I go on YouTube and I watch Pistol Pete's Dog in the Yard. Shout out Success Tone. And it's pretty amazing to see transformations of what people go through and all that. You know, and you guys, anyone can change and you got to put God first. And why I said that is because Christian said he was in jail with this guy who had four live sentences plus 135. And he would tell him, yo, God is great, this, this, that. And it wasn't until they shipped Pistol out the jail that homeboy he was cool with wrote him a letter and said, man, I really miss when you used to inspire me and tell me God got my back and all that. Trust me, miracles are made daily. God is a supernatural God. Miracles are made daily. So trust in God. Peace, y'all. See you tomorrow. Big, big show.